Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today, simple pattern, another chronomid pattern, a buzzer. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a difference in it, not much, but uh, just a, uh, a pattern that I found uh, effective, uh, especially um, if you don't want to tie the unweighted buzzer style patterns, like from the UK. Um, this pattern here has got a little bit of weight in it, um, but it's got that that little uh, the hot spot, like uh, like quite often the they'll they'll put like um, goose by it or something like that in as hot spots. This has a little bit of a different style. So without further ado, I'll switch over to the other camera. So today in the in the vise, I've got a Hens BL five sixty four in a size twelve. Uh, I'll be using um, uh, Zemperfly Black Nano Silk. And also, I'll be using Zemperfly Classic Wax Fluorescent Red. Uh, for the rib, I'll be using just uh, some uh, red wire. And for the bead, I've just got a little a black bead. It's an oversized bead for this hook. It's a, I think it's a 1 8. So, and then for the gills, I'll be using uh, just some uh, white poly yarn. So, alrighty. So let us uh, start this thread right behind the eye, nice and tight. This point here, you, you want to be really tight on this point because, well, you'll see we'll be adding the, uh, we'll be adding the um, gills here. And if you don't tighten down, you, you won't get your bead back onto it. So you want this nice and tight. So it's a little bit too much material there. Don't worry about the length, just leave it long for now. And I said just and just crank that sucker down. You really want to crank on this. That's why this uh whoops. It's uh bumping the light here, sorry. Um, that's why this nano silk is really nice for it. Or uh, you know, you can just because you can really crank down. Give it a bit of a turn. But now I'm gonna cut this off on a bit of an angle. They get a bit of a taper. Okay, I said I'm not going to really worry about the length at this moment. I will in a minute here, but not right now. Don't worry if it frays a little bit. You get this all under control in a few minutes here. So, like I said, nice and tight. And then back here, I'll do a quick, little quick, little whip finish just back here. Nip that off gonna get my length here now nice and short you don't want it too long there just a little bit past the eye of the hook right? so now I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put my bead on sorry I have to do this off camera but it's the way it is So sometimes you can get it on with the narrow end first. Sometimes you have to put it on with the wider end. It depends on how how well you've tied that down. Uh, this time I'll have to do it the other way. So like that. So you still got lots of access to your uh, eye. Pull that up nice and tight. Put your black thread back in again. Just gonna give it a bit of a wax. Start it right behind the hook again, right behind the uh, bead, sorry. And now you want to go back to roughly where you want to stop with this pattern and then back forward again. And build up. This light's getting in my way today. To build up just a little bit in behind the eye here, like in behind the bead, sorry. Like I'm actually pushing, as you can see, I'm I'm wrapped right up against the the uh, bead that helps push it um, this way, right? And help push it tight so that bead won't move on you. Okay, so now I'm going to take a piece of small red wire. 
Um, if you've got small floss, uh, sorry, like a hollow tinsel or something like that, in a, in a small or an extra small, that works really well as, as well here. Um, I actually quite like using the wire in this case because it gives a bit of a better segmentation. So I'm going to give my thread a bit of a counterclockwise spin. So this, I'm, I'm holding this, this wire onto my side. And I'm going to stop where I want to stop, right about there. Now I'm going to give it another counterclockwise spin. I want this thread to be flat. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Because I don't want too much of a body built up, especially in that in the back up here a little bit. It's not too bad. A little bit of a taper here to help hold that uh, bead on and just to give it that, uh, that tapered coronamid look. Just gonna go back a little bit and come back forward again. And that is all. So now I'm gonna do three wraps right at the butt end. I like having this red butt on this one. Um, I found that the red butt, with the red butt, I catch more fish. Um, I guess it's just another attractant. Bring your wire right to the front there. Three on top, three or four in front. Helicopter it off. Now I give myself a whip finish here. Now I'm going to take my orange, or my fluorescent red, they call it. Take my whip finisher. Like I just want the smallest of a, of a hot spot there, right? So. It looks like I got a little bit of that tag in there. Let's see if I can clean that up. We'll see. I'm not too concerned if I don't, but see if I can. If I can get that little taggy off. If not, I'll cheat. And now I got it off. <laughs> a little zap with the lighter always helps. So that's basically it. Now I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna try to get that. get that uh, the gills right so it's not wrapped under Got a little piece that's sticking out to the side there Let's see if I can actually pull that out just to make it look better it's again <laughs> fish aren't gonna know the difference but I will so, there so now I'll just give it a bit of a, a coating with my whatever whatever kind of uh, resin you like. I'm using the Gulf Thinman here. You want to do the first coat always want you want it to be fairly thin. That was a little on the thick side so I'm actually going to wipe some off but it's a little bit too much for my taste for one for the first coat. I like a really thin first coat. That's not too too bad. And zap that. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard for you guys to see that, but that that orange fluorescent red just glows when you hit it with the UV light. So I'm just gonna give that a real quick cure. And then what I would do is give it at least one more coat with uh, UV gel and then uh, resin, and then I would do a coat with Sally Hansen's. So I'll do a coat right now with, actually I'm not going to use Sally Hansen's, I'm going to use this stuff. I did a review on this stuff earlier, um, a while ago. It's just a nail polish, but it's called Witchcraft Rock Solid. The stuff is excellent.
Um, it stays really nice and clear when you put it on. Um, it, uh, it, I, have, I haven't found it that it leaves any air bubbles or anything like that. Um, not that Sally Hansen's is bad, because it's not. I mean, we all use it for a reason. It's an excellent product, but I'm always looking for something else, right? And this gives it quite the nice sheen, too, this Witchcraft Rock Solid. So that's it. That is the fly. Like I said, that'll once that dries, it'll look more segmented again. Um, but that is the finished fly. Uh, just fish this like a, like a regular, like you do with a regular chronomid under a bobber or, or like you can do washing line technique, static, however you want. Um, but uh, this is just, uh, this is my North American version, if you want to call it that, of uh, the, the UK or the, the European style buzzer with the cheeks. Instead of the cheek hot spots, I've just added this orange, right? So um, it's a fairly simple pattern, but it's, it's very effective. So. Tie lines, everyone. If you like that, please give her a thumbs up. If you subscribe, thank you very much. If you haven't, please bring that, uh, hit that subscribe uh, uh, button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Uh, I'm trying to get out three a week, but now probably during the fishing season here, the summer, I'm probably going to go down to two, but we'll see. Um, see how it goes. If I can get three out still, I will. If not, I'll definitely have two out a week. So take her easy, everyone.